Hello, everybody. Hi. This is the Ed and Chris Show, where we do our virtual tastings every week for Old North State Winery as we explore the wines of the world. Hmm. Isn't that That's lovely? Pleasant. Uh, always a pleasure. This is Chris and I's favorite thing to do. Well, we like to cuss more than anything, but we don't do it here. Yet. Yeah, I've been I was Podcast. dangerously Podcast. close a couple times. Well, I think a lot of that has to do with the atmosphere when we're here. I mean, you're, getting, we're not you're right. Work. You're right. I'm well, I mean, how many nights have we had on this porch where there's oh mornings? Yeah, well, true. true. Those nights turn into mornings. Yeah. So I think uh, the more relaxed, uh, comfortable atmosphere. Yeah. yeah, it's it lends itself to that. Thank you, by the way. What can we do to make this more like work-like environment? Maybe have a phone ringing nonstop, have people looking in the windows, y'all open. Well, and, and some stupid questions. Yeah, I think that would that would bring it all home. Well, I will do my best <laughs> to keep the streak alive of not cursing on our video. We appreciate everybody tuning in with us. All that you can, uh, you can join in on this any single week. We just ask you come by and pick up two bottles of wine, and Chef will pair the food to go with it. And you can watch this video at home while we at, at the restaurant on Thursdays at 6 p.m. We do it in person, and we do four wines. So a uh, little bit more incentive to do it at work, or our work. Your, it wouldn't be your work at the restaurant. But also it's a great incentive to do it at home because you get two full bottles. And and really, I mean, I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but I mean, you can do it anytime. Well, that's true. Yeah, you just I tell mean, us when you want to do it. You pick we'll, it up on Friday yeah. with a couple of friends and exactly. do a little virtual tasting on Friday. There's not a reason and in actually, the world it has to be at six o'clock on Thursday. That's true. Um, you know, it may not be identical, but we get it darn close. But probably could pull it off. Again, we, I'm not making a promise. Just saying, that's we could probably pull it off. So we we, we can do that. We can It'd do be it. a fun weekend thing to do with custom your friends. tastings custom by chef tastings. Chris. I mean, we could just do your own personal video. That'd That's right. Fun. Yeah. So wow, how's that for customer service? Well, I guess we should talk about the wine. It smells awfully good. So this is a, as you can see, it's a white wine. This is a Pinot Gris. The label is Acrobat, and Acrobat is a value line from the King Estate. King Estate, uh, one of the biggest names in Oregon, uh, it's certainly in top five in production in the state, uh, you know, it's right up there with other big names like A to Z, and King Estate is known for having a, you know, a little bit higher price point, they wanted to have something for everyone to be able to just grab and drink and pound and spill and not worry about it. But they always make excellent wines. But so, you know, I mean, pro tip here: you line up uh, the proper King Estate label beside the Acrobat. Acrobat's as good as as anything they produce. I mean, a world class subsidiary label here. They do a great job. Yeah, we've and, been uh, drinking this for fifteen years. Yeah, at least it's been on a lot of lists and both of our lists mm -hmm. everywhere and uh yeah and it's a proven winner year after year after year i mean it's just yeah well, it sold a bunch of it at old mill I, I remember yeah i mean it was it was a slam dunk i had it by the glass for five years mm -hmm. i don't think i ever took it off the class list um it's a winner yep it, it never disappoint yeah it's this consistent product all of their wines uh chardonnays whatever whatever you're looking mm -hmm. for they got it and so, you know, King Estate's been around since the mid-80s, and I'm not sure how long their Acrobat line has been in play, but it seems like forever. At least 15 years. We're, we're familiar with it, that's for sure. And so what you're going to get here is one of these, uh, well, let's talk about the grape, Pinot Gris. Many, many of you know of the Pinot Grigio grape from Italy. That is this grape. But typically it's called Pinot Gris outside of that region. You'll hear it called Pinot Gris and well, just about everywhere. Uh, you rarely ever hear it called Pinot Grigio anywhere else. But there's a reason for that. Not just for uh, separation maybe from Italy, but it tastes different when it grows other places. It's very terroir driven and it becomes far more r richer and tr more tropical outside of the, the northern part of Italy. And so it, it's rightfully called something different because it, it 
does drink like a different wine. So it, it is the same varietal. It's just the terroir is changing its its com Absolutely. makeup. It's makeup yeah, yeah. because this tastes. In, I mean, no, you would never confuse. Don't, it don't ever think that Pinot Gris is going like oh, the same grape. No, Pinot Grigio is nothing like this. Yeah, Pinot Grigio is far leaner. Um, uh, certainly not as tropical as this. Yeah, you know, I always I always get. Always get lemon, maybe mm-hmm. some lime from Pinot Grigio, and a lot more minerality. Mm-hmm. Here, this is like a uh, it's a, a weightier, um, f- more fruit driven, but more uh, tropical fruits. Yeah, more pineapple. Yeah, and, and that sort yeah. of thing. And it, but these are not things that we're, you know, trying to say is right or wrong. This is just the way it is. And if you're looking for these kind of flavors, reach this direction. If you want those kind of flavors, reach that direction. So that's kind of why we do this. Yeah, we love all these wines. Oh, there's there's one for um, yeah, there's one for well, f- usually for us, it's we're pairing it with food. So this is a big difference between pairing Pinot Grigio uh, from the Veneto or you know or Fruy rather than maybe uh, like we have here a Pinot Gris from Oregon or a Pinot Gris from Australia or a Pinot Gris from. Well, uh, we just had an Alsatian one Alsatian, a couple weeks ago. Pinot yeah, Gris, yeah. And, and that's a whole different bird in itself. It's n- neither one. Well, and then you're like in Alsace, you're starting to get in all these Pinot Blancs. Well, in the Northwest, too. Yeah, yeah. Which, absolutely. you know, yeah. share a lot of characteristics. Yeah. But it's it's a, these are all important nuance um, that Ed's talking about here. And uh, it really makes a huge difference when you're, when you're pairing. So a white mm-hmm. Pinot. And whatever comes behind it, <laughs> right? Yeah, there's you know, a lot blanc, of gris, or grigio. I mean, yeah, you're right. You, you, you've got to really know what you're getting into, and and uh, but they're all great in their own right. Absolutely, and we love them, and, and we like dissecting them and enjoying them for what they are. But I always love the grapes that show tawa. They they show they they they, they smell, look, taste different when they're grown somewhere else. I'm gonna try to quit hitting this table, chef. I think I'm shaking the. Getting too adamant and shaking I mean, the, the camera. We like, know there's Pinot not, Gris was going to there's not elicit a, this response. There's I, not an earthquake, I promise. It's just me uh, not being aware of my surroundings. And if As, there is, we will recover. If we had a production assistant or a director or... A, well, I know, we put it? the dogs a, back upstairs. Or, so yeah, we, don't right even have, we don't have a sound person, a, what, a boom operator. We don't have anything. Or, or, what is it, Graffer? A hand. Graf- a hand. Or something, or boom. Gaffer, 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 or something like that. Oh, anyway, I, didn't, I just didn't. I, don't, I never really pay attention that much to the credits. Grip. And there's a grip oh, yeah, person grip, who yeah. actually holds the grip of the microphone. I'll be honest. The only thing I really look for is like what music was was credited, and yes. who was their caterer. The caterer is always because we're chefs yeah. and we we care about stuff like that. No offense to any of the people in the film industry, for sure. We're just not educated in that department, as you can clearly see by this oh, video. What? This video clearly says we don't know what the heck we're doing, but we're having a good time and we're getting the we message. We get across. the job done. Mm-hmm. Yes, we get the job done without mm-hmm. um, uh, a support cast. I guess our support casts are winemakers and farmers. That's right. All we're doing is telling you about great stuff. We find great stuff. We tell you about it. And and uh, we quality control it for you which is the most important part absolutely well, we've been, like you said chef we've been qual- uh, quality fact checking and back checking and on the, on acrobat checking for, on the checkers mm-hmm, checking time and time again and that's another great thing that I would like to bring up is uh, you know season to season vintage to vintage acrobat and king of states delivers the amazing consistency mm-hmm. uh, vintage after vintage it's um, mm. there aren't many people who do that and I think a lot of the consistency of the weather there plays into it for sure, not to distract from all the hard work and talent that goes into making a, a wine of this caliber year after year. But they they do have a little heaven kiss summit there in Oregon that oh yeah yeah absolutely and allows yeah. for that talent to right. flourish. And think about this, you know, in terms of wine production, the mid '80s are really when things just started in Oregon. So. This is like one of the forefathers of mm-hmm. winemaking. And imagine what they can do with 100 years of knowledge of this area. If they're making great wines like this in the first 50, think about the next 100, the next 200. Well, we can only think about it. We'll never live that Well, long. our grandkids <laughs> may, may like it. But, you know, it's funny, though. But we, we look at all the, 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 the big houses from you know, Bordeaux and Burgundy and the Rhone. Mm-hmm. Been around 
hundreds and hundreds of years. I mean, you could spit that wine out, but it's still going to command a price point. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and some of those price points are were earned a hundred years ago. And that's true. And and so you know you're going to pay for that knowledge and that uh, estate. Yeah. And I think the same is true here. And they're certainly off to a great start because <laughs> none of those places would survive. Um, decades or centuries mm-hmm. without consistent quality. And to, another thing to your point, Chef, is the further along a winery gets, the less it costs to operate. You know, the yes, upfront cost absolutely. is through the roof. It's so so expensive to start a winery. When you own the land, mm-hmm. when you own the... You, when, you have when, to the re- bank, when the bank doesn't own it When the anymore, bank doesn't yeah. own it. And of course you have to replace barrels and, you know, your, yeah, yeah, yeah. your, your staff and those sort of things. But really, I mean, the, the land and the a lot of the equipment that goes along with it, especially the knowledge, you own it. Yeah, and it, mm-hmm. it takes, you probably have to be someone's great grandson or granddaughter to get a winery essentially handed down to you. Sure. And yeah. then you don't have all the bills, so to speak. You're still going to have, like Chef said, you still have maintenance, but that upfront cost is staggering. It is, and it's hard, and you, and you have to have the mentality of it's going to take decades to recoup it. It's uh, what was what's the saying about a man who plants a tree that'll never see the yeah, shade? Yeah, it's what like a blessed is the man who plants a tree whose shade he will never rest mm-hmm. under. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he knows um, what he's doing, and he's 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 and there's also you know anybody who plants anything believes in tomorrow. Sure. And so you're hoping for a better tomorrow for your. Your vineyard workers, your family, your community, your yeah, indi- community. Your, indi- your industry. That's a great point, mm-hmm. Chef, because community is a big part of winemaking, and all the people that it affects, it is a tremendous uh, community effort. Vast. Sure. I, I wish more people, more casual wine drinkers, could see the wine world through our eyes oh, and yeah. to know its tributaries and how many things it really affects. It's, and the, it's amazing. Yeah, the more we work in the, on the seller side of things mm-hmm. with our winemaker, and and trying to allocate more grapes because we can't produce enough. Sure. And knowing how important it, you know, our relationships are with all these farmers around us and uh, quite frankly across the country because we are we're searching high and low for great quality grapes. And uh, that that is that's a whole other fact. How you I mean we can I mean, we can literally we did a we did a, a effort with a, with a, a Pinot Gris no, Washington State. I Washington yeah. State, mm-hmm. with our winemaker did. And so, you know, the the financial uh, community of winemaking reaches coast to coast because we're working together with them. And maybe around the globe. I mean, sure. you know, we're, we're, we're trying to dabble in some European and Australian offerings. And it's, it's just a, it's, it's a huge, and just even with our purveyors. I mean, you oh, yeah. deal with, sure. you know, dozens of, of different purveyors. I mean, it's huge uh, uh, it's a micro economy right. to itself the ripples go mm-hmm. very far well mm-hmm. chef uh, before we get too far off we never did talk about the food oh we've got we a real something? treat we we're talking about drinking in the season and cooking with the season uh, I got something on a whim in today um, wasn't really sure what it was going to look like or how I was going to be able to do a lot of this to be honest we got some white asparagus in from France today from um, France from France, France. Wow, France, en France. And um, that's awesome. It is awesome, and, and it's beautiful. And so we're going to, um, and, and it's the epitome of springtime. Oh yeah. Um, so this is going to be delicious. We're going to uh, blanch, peel and blanch our white asparagus. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a uh, green onion, a little spring onion, some lemon. And egg oh, yes. on this. So, some egg, a little spring onion, uh, lemon. I don't know yet if I'm going to do a hollandaise or an emulsion, but it'll be one of the two. Uh, but I think all those flavors are going to oh, yeah. just sing with wonderful. this wonderful quinoa gray. It's going to be a real treat. That sounds like chef table stuff to me. It might be a test run. Mm. We may have some guinea pigs out there. Dealing with it because that white asparagus is going to be the first course yeah, well, of our chef table this weekend, and so yeah, we're we're totally getting pigging this this stuff. We have more and more uh, new guests at our Thursday we night do. tastings, and 
often this question is, is like, do you have these wines on your list? And I'm like, no. <laughs> Every week we do four different wines, and it's... Now I said, now... Sometimes I will, they'll I'll, circle back. I said, I say, I will say this. A lot of times I'm kind of feeding off the reaction of the people that are tasting this to see if that will go to the list. Four cases flies out of a singular wine, and guess right. what? We're going to see that on the... Well, that... And again... That depends on a lot of things. Can you sustain it for a couple of months? Where are they going to Where have this do, vintage? Do I, exactly. And, and so, exactly. again, it's not like it, it's irrelevant if you like the wine or not. And There's so many factors behind the scenes that sure. Ed has to deal with. It would, it would make it possible for it to be on the list. And you can't just put something on the list for a few days. You, yeah. You can't redo a wine list. Well, you could. I guess technically you could redo it every week, but... It's not a good idea. People want to see a little consistency. consistency. Absolutely. They, they really do. And I, I know everybody likes new and fresh, but they also need consistency. But there that's what specials and Thursday nights are for. That's right. But the list needs to be like a blanket. It needs to yeah. comfort you. You know it's going to be there. And Well, that's why we added <laughs> that uh, Matthews cab from Washington, and it, it's selling great. And it's delicious. And we sold a bunch at Thursday night, but I was like, hey, dude, how much of this stuff do you right. have before I put it on the list? All right, so... We are going to move to red, and this is, uh, boy, Chris and I really love everything in this portfolio. Um, Marietta Cellars, uh, Sonoma County, Geyserville area. Geyserville, for all, any of you who, and, and I don't know, Geyserville is very well known in hoity toity stuff, but if you don't know, that is the, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, and that is the Zen region in California. Well, we sure do like it. We like to think so. For sure. I think so yeah. for sure. Yeah. And, I mean, I mean, you were, you were going to have you could probably Paso, you could nuance this. Sure, people you know, people it, like Paso Robles, people like Lodi, but I would say Geyserville would be more of the premium. Pre- that's thank you. Thank but, God I mean, every, but, you are here. But to, everybody to make loves sense what they everything. love. But everybody loves what they love. You know, I oh love, absolutely. I love a Lodi Zen. Because it's it's but it is it's not as refined. It's, it's not. It's, but it is. But there's something cool about how bold and and kind of toasty, smoky it is. That makes sense. And I think I like the Geyserville because I'm not as much of a Zen fan as you are. You are, yeah. And so to me, true. it tastes more like a blend. Or even this right. is a blend. But even their straight Geyserville Zens, right. like the Montebello, and that sort of thing, yeah. to me, just. And this is this is a blend, but it is mostly Zen. It is sure. Zen driven, and a, a very interesting. Uh, well, they most of everything they do is blended in some form or fashion. Uh, we really love this winery. They they do amazing things for the buck. I would say they're probably the. I would say they're like the jumping off point of premium. Like sure, they bring premium price to the lowest that you can get for a premium wine. Does that make sense? When, you, when you're ready, yeah, they're ready to help you walk across you, the bridge, right? Um, and not be going, yeah, yeah, yeah. The sticker shock. They take the sticker shock away from premium, right? They make premium wines without a doubt. Their prices are not premium. I mean, I don't know how they it's do a great it. Way to put I'm it. glad they do it. It's a great way to put it. That RMA they make. Oh, the, um, was it the Crystal? I mean, they like they have. They name all their wines at their at their normal label. The OVR is a, a secondary label. This is really interesting, non-vintage here, but I will tell you this: that this uh, it is. They do have a series of lot numbers, and the lot numbers uh, identify their releases. Uh, this is lot number seventy-one that we're tasting, and it does have some Syrah in it. Uh, which we're okay with. We like Syrah. Hey, bonus and upgrade. Yeah, so. They 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 call it all all old vine red, but they are Zen specialists. But that doesn't mean that's all they make, for sure. Oh, not Marietta. No, yeah. they, they have some killer syrups. You better believe it. Killer, and don't make. be turned off by non vintage, right? Especially with a premium producer like mm. this. So a lot of people when they see non vintage, mm. they're like, "Oh, this is stuff from eight months ago." Well, actually, if you're dealing with a thing like this, you you might have some wine that's six years old in this. That they have been using for blending, or they had something in mind, and they're like, "Absolutely, well, let's fill this out, mm-hmm. and let's take this." So, really, this non-vintage blend, in my opinion, is probably giving you an upgrade more than a trying to be like clever and 
and right. do new stuff. I mean, you're you know, that happens a lot. You absolutely nailed it, Chef. And because you know what I love about them is they 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 tell you everything you ever want to know about their wines. They are very technically savvy uh, with their communication of what goes on with their wines. I mean, if you want to know about their wines, you go to their website and they have great tech sheets. And, uh, you know, for, for geeks like me, I really like this. So they break down how each grape spends its life and which vintage it's from. And, and so this is a 19 Zen, but an 18 Syrah and an 18 Petit Verdot. So that is why they can't put a vintage on it. It's not because it's a cuvee blend. It, I mean, it is a blend, but it, it's going to change. It's going to... But I love how they still follow it. They don't, they don't just give you, hey, this is a cuvee of different vintages. They will tell you what percentage and what mm-hmm. year everything in the bottle is, and it changes each lot. And uh, for, for techies and wine, wine geeks like me, that's awesome because... Um, yeah, I'm always trying to figure things out anyway, yes, and it helps yes, me kind absolutely. of reevaluate, make sure my palate is on. Well, and it's great that they, you know, that they they have that devotion, mm-hmm. and they know that that you know, wine drinkers and buyers like you, who are so curious and who want more information and who want to dive into the third and fourth tiers of a winery and not just know if it's good juice right. or not. They provide that, and ultimately, none of that would matter if their wines weren't good. Because who would who would care to follow through? Sure, I mean, you, know, you would have no incentive, right? To 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 go to to dig yeah, deeper. You'd be like, <laughs> and move on. Yeah, but that that that's just a testament to how much people like their wines. People want to know, wow, how'd you do this? How do you get this flavor profile? And uh, you know, this is how they're doing it. They're mixing vintages. Uh, they're aging in some stainless steel, some neutral oak, some not neutral oak, some uh, French oak. It's so it, it, cool. Yeah, they are they are very creative in how they do things. But I'm telling you, they're master blenders, and I think it's uh, an art that is really underappreciated. Until you, Chef Chris blended wines before I did, and he told me that I should try it, and I had a great time doing it. We both ended up blending a wine. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. fascinating. You would think it's you think it's very one plus one equals two, and it's, it is not. It, no, that process it, was so eye opening. <laughs> it was. You could if you change five percent of something, oh. it doesn't change it five percent. It could change it like a e- million percent. It seems easily. like it's crazy. And what there's 5% so will do. much math. Yeah. And if you aren't, and the problem is you're getting millimeters while you're doing it. <laughs> you don't. But spit. you're having. Wait, wait a second. You, you, you aren't spitting out. What's that? <laughs> yeah, you do get a little tipsy. Well, and you have to keep meticulous notes. Yes. Because you you know to blend one decent wine, you have to blend forty. Yeah. Wines. Mm-hmm. And you have to go back and like you could have missed it, like you said, by sure. a milliliter. So you're like. Yeah, but, you know, this third thing with this and that, maybe it just needed it. I mean, it's, it's oh, like yeah. you could really get mad scientist on it. Uh, but, you know, it's a very rewarding process. It is. Uh, but it is meticulous. It's one of the most interesting things about wine world, and it's, it's probably about the hundredth thing on the list that people think about. But blending is quite an art, a craft, you know, and, uh, well, Chef Chris and I are huge Southern Roan fans where it's everything is... 99% blended. At least. Our favorite wines in the world are blended. They're the best often, wines. And often, I'm just going to say it. And I don't care what anybody else says. The best wines in the world are blended. And everybody, and again, everybody has their opinion. Everybody gets, well, this gets their say. But that doesn't mean we don't get our say. And my say sure. is the best the bo- wines the in the world are blended. He's, there's one vote. There's one vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but th- this is this is what the, the flavor profiles that Chris and I have just kind of gravitated to tend to have a blend and uh, not that the single varietals are are terrible or anything like that it's just for our particular palates uh, that's kind of where we end up so well, I it like makes sauce sense. on my food that's true yeah and I like pepper that's true and I like fat I like and little, I like and I like a little hot sauce see mm-hmm. we've already listed four things that interplay with a protein right and without it yeah. It doesn't take yeah, away from the quite, quality of the protein. That's true. That protein is still amazing. Yep. 
but you blend it with salt and pepper and hot sauce and swoosh it, swoosh it with some oil or butter. Yes, butter. it's gotten gooder. Mm-hmm. I agree. I just, I just know mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Well, all you know, culinary aside, this wine is luscious. It's so well rounded. It's so well integrated. It's plush. It's it's got great body to it. It gives you all. Yet the it's still things. bright. It's bright. It is bright, and also it's uh, what I would say. It's the kind of wine that you could drink with just about anything. Um, it, it is certainly not a dainty red, but it's so silky. I think it wouldn't be clumsy against some lighter food. Not at all. And you know, and again, <clears throat> I bring my prejudice to the table with Zen. Um, because I think they're food killers. I mean, you have to be very careful, in my opinion. Sure, especially herring. Like, a, like the big, the, they tend to go too big. They go too big. You really got to be on your game to pair with Zen, because Zins can get out of control, just like Petite Sirah's can. Sure. Um, <coughs> however, that is not the case with this, and mm-hmm. and, and this is uh, bright yet silky. Mm-hmm. It's a ton of fruit. Yeah. But it's not jammy. Right, and it has all the the one the food friendly attributes of Zen without the negative food attributes. Of totally Zen. agree, and it's just it's it's a gem. It's yep. an absolute gem. And uh, you know that it's it is dry, but it's the it's it's dry that it's not overbearing. So I, I really do think that uh, lighter foods would go great with this. Uh, the tannins are integrated; they're not. I mean, I feel them. Yeah, but, they're, feel but they're not overwhelming. They're not overwhelming. Yeah. Like, like you, your palate is in no way blown out, like you're saying. So, it can handle more nuanced food um, without having to. There is like drive this into a wall. Yeah, there's like a the the. How I, I, I hate to even bring the word up, but it, there is like an approach. It almost approaches some bitterness in it, mm-hmm. which is always good for food, in my opinion. Um, you know, I miss the days when we were a chef, when bitters, you know, we were coming up, youngins, young chefs, bitters were very A hundred years ago. Yeah, it feels like it. Bitter, bitter greens and bitter Maybe foods were, but they were complemented with things to balance them out. Yes. And now, uh, people's palate have really grown away from that. But there are wines that have just like a hint of it or approaching it. It's like it doesn't quite get to bitter, but you can tell it's it's trying to tickle those taste buds. You're getting the pepper without the pepper. Right. You, it's like if you if you cranked a pepper grinder, you're getting the, the like mouth got, feel of that, but yeah. not the pepper itself. Like yeah. It's not like that mm-hmm. peanut pepper, but it's the mouth feel of mm-hmm. it. It's fascinating. It is. And so... With all this diversity in this wine, Chef, what do you think you're going to throw at it? Well, we've got a little fun pairing here. So we've got a variety of sausages in from our our friend Nick Hagen at Darcy Farms last week. Um, and I mean, we got them all. Nice. Um, so we're going to do a beautiful sausage from them with some of the Bear Wallow cheese from Looking Glass. Uh, now, Looking Glass Creamer, we don't feature as much of their stuff because the other... Our other four or five regional yeah, creameries so gets, gets just really yeah a lot of requests for that. But the Bear Wallow is an Alpine style cheese. It's mm-hmm. aged. You could probably compare it to Gruyere. But Gruyere is a little bit softer than this. This has really the texture of of a hard cheese, like a Parm or a, you know, not an Asiatic, I mean like a legit hard cheese. But it has all that the character of Gruyere. So cool. it, it's really great. So we're going to serve the the bear wallow with the smoke. I think I'm going to do the, the kielbasa. Mm-hmm. I really do. Now, having tried this, you know, I was going to do one of the bigger sausages, but I think the kielbasa with that cheese is going to allow the cheese to shine a little bit more, which is going to go better with this. I love it. That's a great Man, I had a... I had a um, a full deck to choose from. That's true. But I wanted to try the wine and talk yeah. about it with you. And now talking with you, right. talking now, through it, I think that's going to be the way to go. Yeah, um, you knew the producer, but you didn't know the, what we were going to drink. So, wow, I think you're, 
you 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 came with a loaded toolbox. I had a lot of tools. Yes. Yes. I had a lot of tools to choose from, and hopefully this will be the right choice. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know what? Even if it isn't, um, hmm. sausage, artisan sausage, artisan cheese, artisan wine. Yeah, sounds like a pretty good night to me. Absolutely, it's gonna be great. Well, chef, this is always the best part of the day, if not the best part of the week. I'm gonna go with the week. We always enjoy having you. Um, you know, our view is a little different over the next couple months because we're hanging. Three squirrels right there yeah, on the fence. Yeah, you, know, you probably heard all kinds of thunder and stuff. It's probably going to pour on us. But hey, we we got covered. We're we good. got covered. We're good. Thanks for listening along. Uh, I want to send a shout out to Stella Lois. Uh, get healthy, get quick, get, get well back. Soon. We we're thinking about you. Be well. And um, to all my friends out there, uh, I want to say thank you for watching. We sure do appreciate all your support. And cheers to everybody, right? Cheers across the board. So much to be thankful for. We're in full spring. Um, everyone's garden's growing. The weather's warm. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's a good feel in the air. People are traveling, getting out. You got to go see your family again. I just yeah. got to go see my family. We're out and about. Um, we're out and about. We're feeling good. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's pollen coating everything. Life's good. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, the sneezes. Yeah, we'll get through this just like we've gotten through everything Everything else. else. And we appreciate all of y'all and look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you very much. See ya. Bye.